Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Castellano. And I'm Andrew Donovan, in for Jeff. There are many barriers for children living in poverty in the city of Syracuse. And as gun violence involving children seems to be rising, more impoverished neighborhoods deal with that impact. News Channel 9's Madison Moore is learning how some organizations are navigating the aftermath. Playdates with friends, after school programs, finishing up homework. That may be on your child's after school to do list, but for some kids living in the city of Syracuse, it's gun violence, oftentimes at no fault of their own. When there's violence in neighborhoods, you know, that's traumatic for five and six year old children to know that their brother or sister or someone, their cousin or relative got shot, or that a friend of theirs was shot, or that there were gunshots last night or this morning. Gun violence, specifically youth gun violence, has been getting worse in the city of Syracuse. Since 2016, 34 kids aged 17 or younger were suspects in a homicide, 23 of them at the mercy of guns. We keep seeing our suspects and victims of gun crime get younger and younger, um, and it's definitely a concern, but it's definitely something that's a challenge. It's taxing on the police department and, and takes up uh, a lot of our efforts. Efforts that include a data-driven approach using shot spotter, social media, and a specific gang violence task force. But possibly more important are the attempts to build trust between the department and the city's youth through outreach programs like the Police Athletics League. Um, we really are investing 10, 20 years from now in our future residents. So we really understand that we can't just build relationships with you know, adults, but that youth has to be an important part. But in the meantime, kids are trying to navigate the trauma they're experiencing. That's where the staff at Syracuse Community Connections comes in. Lots of trauma. Um, with everything that's going on right now, the pandemic has also caused a larger effect. PTSD, of course, um, mental health is huge right now. For some, the Southwest Community Center is their only safe haven. The center not only providing intervention programs for kids heading down the wrong path, but also prevention programs to reach kids before it's too late. Kids are not born wanting to hate. Kids are not born wanting to destroy. But kids are not born wanting to kill each other, right? It is something that's a learned behavior. So if we can catch our kids early, kindergarten, preschool and started doing more of that collectively, um, it definitely would make a, a greater impact on the city of Syracuse and we can see major changes happening. And it's that same mentality Deputy Mayor Owens has. Um, because you're living in poverty does not mean that you choose to pick up a gun. That said, the economic situations that people find them themselves in may put them in a position where they see no alternative, not necessarily for causing harm to people, but seeing other methods for earning money. But as gun violence continues to escalate in our community, the city is working to combat it through the newly created Mayor's Office to Reduce Gun Violence. Our new director of the Mayor's Office to Reduce Gun Violence, uh, Paso Latif Kenzie, has always said that our youth gun violence problem is not a youth problem, it's an adult problem. And so it is up to us to help them find the alternative. The violence isn't only impacting the children, but the whole family. Syracuse Community Connections recognizes the key is a strong family unit, especially for those living in poverty. Oh, it's, it's extremely important. It's essential because you can help a child and provide services and make an impact on that child. But when they're going back home, it's the same environment. Another goal for these children, making sure they're on the path towards a successful future, hoping they'll too return to Syracuse one day and pay it forward. When I see hope, I'm excited. When I can contribute something um, to the community that I grew up in, the community that I love so much, people that I love so much, it's a blessing. We've introduced you to the problems gripping the city of Syracuse, but what are the solutions? I'll be exploring that tomorrow in our final story in our series, City in Crisis, Combating Child Poverty. Christy? Madison, thank you. And you don't have to wait to help. You can head to localesquire.com to find a dedicated page of resources to help those living in poverty in Syracuse.